today on the Perception in Action podcast. I get together with Randy Sullivan, Franz Bosch, and Martin Nyhoff to preview the 5th Annual Florida Baseball Armory Skill Acquisition Summit, which will be held October 21st through 22nd this year. How can we merge physical development and baseball skills to best achieve transfer of training? So it's time for a call to action. Hi, this is Rob Gray from Arizona State University. I've been on a now over 25-year journey as a researcher, professor, and high-performance consultant to understand how we acquire and adapt our perceptual motor skills. Welcome to the Perception in Action podcast, where I discuss how psychological research can be applied to improving performance, accelerating skill acquisition, and designing technologies. Now on to the show. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Perception in Action podcast. What we want to talk about, I have a group here, we want to talk about our uh, Baseball Skill Acquisition Summit, give you a little preview for this year, uh, what we're going to talk about and what the theme is and tell you a little bit about it. And I'll kick it to Randy Sullivan first so you can get us going on, on it. Yeah, thanks a lot. So yeah, this this is our fifth one. I'm, I'm wow. really excited about it. We had we had one, week, one year off for COVID, but the fifth annual summit, we keep building on the information it's always, it's always a bit of a challenge because we have people who have been through summits before and we have mm-hmm. brand new people. And so we have to kind of merge the content a little bit. But every year we have a new theme. Uh, this year's theme is, is merging physical development and skill. It's really about how do we make everything count for transfer? How do we, yeah. how do we integrate all the disciplines, break down the silos that sort of cliche has, be, has become a little bit cliche now, but, but just knocking down the barriers so that we get the best return on our training time with everything we do. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's October 21st and 22nd in Lakeland. We have a new hotel that we're going to introduce the theory in this year. Um, bigger space, nicer nicer facilities. So we kind of upgraded that. And then the second day, after we kind of lay out all the theory and, and we go through our presentations, the second day is practical application over here at the Armory mm-hmm. in our brand new 21,000 square foot facility that is really nice that we can... Just take the guys through, uh, take all the coaches and the, the, the uh, gentlemen and ladies through the, the on-hands application. How do we make this all happen? I know a lot of the information has been out there now and teams and, and instructors and facilities are are accepting the theory, mm-hmm. which was the first challenge. But now the question is how do we individualize it? How do we implement it? How do we, as you mentioned once, how do we know if we're getting better? How do we measure yeah. it? And then how do we implement and apply it uh, on an individual basis so that we can really become use, use the, all the data and information that we're getting to become better teachers rather than just using it to allow us to select and eliminate as Franz talks about a lot. Like how do we, how do we use this to actually provide the instruction and, and it'll be a lot of actionable takeaways this time of things that you can use to take back to your program But, uh, you know, beyond that, if, and we do all have team discounts as well, group discounts. All they have to do is call Amy at 866-STRIKE-3. That's 866-787-4533, and she can talk about team discounts. So that's sort of the overall theme, and I'll, I'll send it back to you to kind of go around the table and let everybody talk about what they're going to discuss. Yeah, yeah no, that, that's good, Randy. And I would, uh, you know, I always enjoy uh, this. I, I particularly the, the, the app, the practical day. Um, you get so much out of that because everyone knows you use water bag, but you'll see the subtleties of how you, what you say to the athlete, what you do based on how they react to it. There's a lot, I learned a lot last year by just watching you, these guys, how, how they do it. So there's a lot of little things in there that you can only learn by watching someone, else, a good coach do it. So that that's one of the, my favorite parts. So, yeah. So we're talking about, uh, the, we're talking about um, uh, training, um, so it's meeting, f- f- merging physical development and baseball skill is the theme, right? And transfer right. of training. So, uh, Franz, maybe I'll go to you. What kind of what? What is what is your thoughts about this, and what you're going to talk about? Yeah, well, my talk uh, has a title called "Transfer of Training: uh, The Elephant in the Room." Mm-hmm. Uh, look at uh, everything that's out there on. On, on skill development, uh, even if you look at training theory, then there's a big elephant in the room. There's one topic that we try to avoid is uh, transfer of training right. because 
we hardly have a, a clue of it. And uh, or we have a clue, but it's never been structured properly. So if you look at science, right, and, and how important the topic of transfer of training is, there should be uh, m- multiple books, a couple of inches thick, talking about mm-hmm. what specificity is and how that leads to transfer of training. But there's nothing there. There's just something here and there. You can find something over here and then some very, very foggy uh, explanation over there. But a good thorough study on on uh, the topic is, is actually lacking. So uh, what has happened in the past is that we just assume the transfer of training, right? Or we claim Mm -hmm. without much evidence that it's transferring. So what I would not try to do in my talk is to look at the absence in the the, the classic approach of uh, of training, where it's completely absent Mm -hmm. and you assume it happens like a magic trick. And then we look on the other side, like people who latch on to to the specificity up to the highest degree, right? Like mm-hmm. uh, be a good baseball player, you have to play baseball, that's it, which also doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, from that, I would try to kind of draw a picture of what uh, the body actually wants to do in respect of uh, gathering information and what information it wants to use and which information it throws away and then how that then leads to uh, do transfer and just a theoretical foundation for the rest of the two days that people then uh, can put into practical application. Well, sounds good. Yeah, uh, it is a huge topic that we mostly ignore <laughs> completely. <laughs> Any kind of technology company ignores it pretty much completely, or they show what we call near transfer. If you train yeah. on our product, you get better at using our product which doesn't necessarily make you a better base. That's true of everything, right? <laughs> yeah. It's extremely important, right? Mm-hmm. You see the importance in all, all, uh, all sports. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's one of the reasons that, for instance, uh, uh, where sports become more athletic and more intense, right? Mm-hmm. Injury rates go up like crazy yeah. because uh, the connection with, with keeping yourself protected is, is not there. And if you understand these these connections a little better, so how the body then reacts to all these things, mm-hmm. uh, you probably will have a lot of benefit from it. For sure. Yeah, and I think it's particularly important in baseball, as Randy and Martin know. We have to somehow make you good at throwing without making you throw too much, right? right. It's, yeah. You have to walk this magic line of of not – you can't do the real thing all the time. Or you're gonna, you're, all the time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so we, we – um, well, so yeah. I think that um, I think that that's really important. These, you know, a lot of our work is based around the the ideas that Franz sort of uncovered about anatomical attractors, right? Mm-hmm. And and when one of the limiting factors in teaching someone to throw and hit has always been you can't throw and hit enough to get good at it, right? Mm-hmm. Like you can't just go long toss forever. You can't long toss all day, right? Yeah. Um, but now that we understand these these movement attractors, these big rocks, you can get better at them without actually having to do the skill. And that's what we're talking about with transfer. So for the first time ever, we can get better at throwing and hitting without actually having to throw and hit. We can get better at the skill without actually having to perform the skill exactly. Mm-hmm. And that's where we dig into the specificity around the condition and not necessarily the details, right? Of, yeah. Of, so it's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, Martin, what are you going to – how are you going to – Jump in here. Yeah. Still thinking so about it. The, <laughs> no, no. So if you look at the transfer of training uh, uh, and we're looking for adaptations towards what we want to get in the end, mm-hmm. right? We get a higher level of output. Um, we're going to look uh, into the constraints that approach you again and the learning curve and how the body should learn within these constraints and explore uh, to find better stability, to, to keep growing and and what things that you cannot do or shouldn't do or that you can do to to really, from self-exploration, finding these stable attractors and, and making them even more uh, stable on, on deeper levels. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's more about the, the learning curve and the learning stages within the constraints that approach using uh, implicit learning to let's say, become a better hitter or become a better infielder or become a better uh, uh, pitcher. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's 
it has a theoretical work, but there's a lot of baseball examples uh, in there, mm-hmm. um, which shows growth in uh, into where we want them to grow. Yeah. I so yeah, I'm pretty excited sense. about that. I, I did a big one about that last year and just building off of that um, to show even more or some other stuff uh, um, in, in that framework. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's good. Um, Randy, do you want to get into what, what you're going to? Sure. Yeah. yeah. So I'll be covering the pitching side of it. Bart, who's not able to yeah. be with us today, is going to cover the hitting side of it. And um, I'm going to really just walk through these these. Franz identified like about a dozen of these attractors for agility and, you know, and things like rugby and tennis and things like that. And I've kind of whittled it down to about eight that apply to pitching. And I think the difference is a closed skill versus an open skill. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm going to go through those eight attractors that we believe are really universal to movement. Um, And how, how do we define stability in those just anatomically? They're based around individual anatomy and, and, you know, uh, I'll talk a little bit about how, you know, one move can cascade into a, a bunch of other conditions where you get these knock-on effects downstream and then how you can also have knock-on effects upstream from cognitive input and intended endpoint and things like that. And then uh, I'll, if I have enough time, I've been, you know, working on this new <laughs> book with Franz and I'm going to, I've been digging into the micro mm-hmm. environment, what's happening inside the organism as he merges out where I think we sent you a couple of chapters yep. of that. Um, and it's been fun because Franz is a rigorous editor. He's a rigorous <laughs> editor. They go on version six of the first two of 11 chapters. Um, but I've been learning a lot about what's going on internally and how does the body organize from the inside out, from the microorganism outward. And I'm going to make the argument that this thing that we call feel, that people chase, is rather elusive because of the sluggishness of the proprioceptive feedback. I think that because when you look at the timing of how quick you have to get the information to be able to adapt to it, I think that um, you may be able to feel something in the first move, but this thing that people say they feel, what they can probably use it because the information comes in delayed is it may be used to calibrate the next movement, to recalibrate on the next move for a learning uh, situation, but not necessarily in the moment. I, I think it might be futile to be trying to chase a feel in the act of you know, act of the moment. So mm-hmm. I'll talk about that a little bit as we, you know, as we go through the anatomical attractors of pitching. Awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So for my part, what I, I'll talk a little bit about build on last year, the action capacity mm-hmm. skill, but what I really want to focus on is the difference I see between specificity and representativeness. So specific, the specificity of baseball pitching is you're throwing a five ounce ball. Right, so why would you ever practice with a lighter ball or a heavier ball or a smaller ball? Um, because it's representative. It has a similar information, similar task dynamics. So when you use representative, it opens you to much more things you can do, giving the athletes problems to solve um, with different equipment than they're ever going to use in a game, uh, swinging a longer than normal bat or a heavier bat or a lighter bat. But we're still not doing just anything. We have clear principles. We have things that have to be there for it to, to transfer. So that's kind of what. Um, so, so you can have you, you don't have to go for full specificity. I don't think all the time to get transfer, even though you know that. So th- there are some key things you want there for it to be effective. But um, there's a little more. You can have a little more latitude and try and kind of play with the constraints a little bit and do things you wouldn't do in a real competition. So. That's yeah. what I'm going to kind of look at. Yeah. Really good. No, that's, that's yeah. super interesting. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. It's, uh, it's all in the, in the same uh, um, realm of what we're trying to accomplish mm-hmm. uh, at the summit, right? Which is, it's about specificity, but especially about transfer. Yeah, for sure. Right. Yeah, I know, yeah. And, you know, uh, I know a lot of people are starting in baseball, start to use water bags and things. And the question I get, how do I know this is working, right? Yeah. How do we know this is going to transfer to me? Uh, the the honest answer that we've all accepted is it's not easy to to it's not easy to, we don't know for, I can't demonstrate it simply because like, we're not using a simple linear measure to show you're right. getting better uh, we're yeah, a complex right. system right yeah. so we yeah, all, look, yeah. uh, what I was presenting so I'll, I'll be the lead in uh, yeah. for for the rest of the day mm-hmm. uh, uh, a, may, a very important part in what I want to explain 
is that uh, the, there are these paradoxes in 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 uh, in learning, right? Mm-hmm. You have to be specific, but if you're only specific, it doesn't work. You also have to be mm-hmm. non-specific. And um, what I want to show is that we have to embrace these paradoxes because these paradoxes are innate in our learning system. Uh-huh. And they're innate in the learning system to not get a, a pile of garbage movement possibilities piling up forever. So you 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 can't find uh, any any good solution quickly anymore, right? The the famous uh, storage and retrieval problem. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. To go to uh, the paradoxes of learning a little bit, and then instead of endlessly having to read papers, that one paper says this is important, the other says no, you have to go the other way. Uh, I want to show that you have to go sometimes this way, sometimes that way. You have to use the whole spectrum because mm-hmm. the paradox is built in as a kind of a safety device for, for learning. Yeah. No, I think that's a really important point. We're not going to give you any magic pills like this is guaranteed to transfer work, right? It's a complex problem, right? You know, but if you have a sound rationale, like a, a grounding in attractors for me is is a sound rationale for why this should transfer Right. Um, and it also allows us to knock down the silos. And if we, if yeah, every discipline yeah. is sort of rallied around the attractors, now everybody's working on the same thing. Now yeah. we're, we're getting more specificity because it's not about the details or the little pebbles. It's the big rocks. And it, it, if, if in the gym we can show that we can do these kinds of activities that will teach you to stabilize a rotation around a hinge mm-hmm. or a, a hip lock or, or some other attractor proximal distal action or something like that, now – Everything we do can be guided individually within every discipline, and now everybody's on the same page. We're all speaking the same language, yep. all working towards the same goal, and that's going to be a big part of Alan's presentation. Alan Kolb, our performance director here, who's become a brilliant, uh, a brilliant um, implementer of these ideas. Right? Um, mm-hmm. I can do an evaluation and say this guy doesn't know how to rotate around his hinge, or he doesn't know how to close in front of his pelvis. Uh, he can go over to the gym and give them four or five activities to do there. That involved not throwing a baseball, but will transfer to the act of throwing a baseball, which is really, and we're going to be doing a lot of that blending to show the integration. Mm-hmm. And he'll spend a lot of time on day one explaining how we do that. And then also on practical days where he really shines in showing and Franz sort of directs that and showing how do we, how do we integrate discipline so that everybody's working on the same things? Yeah. No, I think that's a good range. I think I'll get into a little bit. I call it this making it sticky, right? So you yeah. get them to move a certain way with a certain constraint, then they have to get that into the real thing. Right? At some point, they have to get that movement into throwing a ball. Right? Mm-hmm. We're just going to throw the ball less, but we still have to try to get it in there. So, yeah, I think that's an important uh, point. But I found interesting in, in the notion that we, let's say, develop mm-hmm. amongst us is that uh, I've been describing attractors in, in, uh, in, in, in movement, right? But uh, what I found interesting uh, is, is something that Randy said. Uh, what you are doing, Rob, is trying to find attractors in, in perception, mm-hmm. right? in what the environment is doing. And in the new book that Randy is writing, he actually talks about direct perception of uh, the proprioceptive system. So that also in there, there, sh- there must be attractors because otherwise that that uh, uh, that chaotic stream of information sure. coming out of the system is impossible to to cope with. So we have attractors in movement. We have attractors in, in internal sensory information. Attractors in perceiving the environment, uh, which really is a, a fascinating mm-hmm. uh, uh, hole to to look at. For sure, yep. there's a lot of parallels. I've always, you know, like parallels between Nikolai Bernstein and James Gibson. They're both mm-hmm. looking at the same things: one motor, one perception. So, yeah. and which, so many which makes it yeah. somewhat laughable when we think that we can solve a player's problem by changing his mechanics yeah. the part that we can actually see because mm-hmm. so many subsystems have, have had to self-organize to lead up to that mm-hmm. and so much information has been exchanged and noise is there we can see the macro environment but we can't really all we can do is immerse our athlete in an environment that compels the micro environment to cooperate you know mm-hmm. to, to create the kind of adaptations we need so yeah it's fascinating yeah, yeah i think it's a more um honest approach right we're not selling you we're not can't fix everything we just we're recognizing this is a complex adaptive system we don't know all the answers or have a simple change that's going to make this happen right you got to accept that yeah yeah 
It's a lot less, aha, uh-huh, that's it. Moments. Yeah. It's a lot less yeah. than that. Yeah. yeah. That sure. thing right there. That might work. I don't know. Yeah. 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 So. But immerse them in the environment and trust that the mm-hmm. stimulus that you're providing is eliciting the adaptation or compelling the micro environment, the micro self organization to occur. Yeah. Um, for sure. Really, really fascinating when you look at it that way. And, you know, we probably don't want to leave old Bart out of this. He's going to be talking about hitting. Mm hmm. And, yep. and his presentation is called The Core of Hitting, okay? It's really going through the anatomy of, you talk about transfer, he's talking about transfer of energy yeah. from from the lower half to the bat and does a really good job of breaking that down anatomically. And so he'll be talking about that too as well. So. A lot of that uh, literal yeah. core, right? The ab- yeah, abdominal the section, yeah. yeah, abdominals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah like that, that term has been so overused. Like, well, I asked him, what do you mean by core? What does that mean? He goes, yeah. like the, the core, like the essence of what's yeah. happening, right? Yeah. But yeah it's so. a funny title. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, yep. So I think we'll have a, somehow we, we never talk, talk before. <laughs> well, we talk, this is a bunch that we talked before, but it all seems to kind of come together on the, on the actual conference. So. But yeah. We all have the same ideas going through our heads, it seems like, you know. Yeah, for sure. Because <laughs> we're all experiencing the same problems, you know. Yeah. And, yeah, and I, you're pointing at the starting, Randy, there's a mix of oh, people that have been there before and people are brand new. I think it's it <laughs> can both benefit, right? I, I certainly learn. I've been to all of them, and I keep learning stuff. Me so, too. Yeah, um, me too. Um, yeah. So, uh, uh, but, yeah, and I think we try to give it enough introduction to, to, to a brand new person. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it, it, they do a pretty good job of kind of going over the fundamentals without boring the people that have been there. Usually, a nice review. Yeah, um, introducing any concepts and then and you know, as you know, Rob, the best part is afterwards. Yeah, you know, it's the it's the talk around the bar after mm-hmm. and the discussions that we have, the Q and A the Q and A sessions, and really the interaction with the audience that really yeah. helps us grow as well. So yeah, there's lots of time to ask questions and mm-hmm. trade ideas and. So, uh, so Randy, so what are the dates and the, where to go yeah. again? Okay. October 21st and 22nd here in Lakeland, Florida. Okay. Um, first day is at a hotel in downtown Lakeland, okay. if, if, whatever that means. Downtown Lakeland. <laughs> <laughs> Metropolitan Lakeland. <laughs> um, and then the second day is here at the armory. Um, get, get your reservation quick. Cause there's two big events. We have a, we have a, boat race on one of the lakes and we have a classic car show oh okay so, it's a busy weekend place be hopping. yeah place is gonna be hopping <laughs> <laughs> and so get in quick um they can register at florida baseball armory.com slash summit s-u-m-m-i-t yep and or they can simply call us at 866-787-4533 and amy can talk them through it yeah no and, and you, as you mentioned there's team discounts um yeah, I think one of the things I've seen, you know, one of the real challenges with this approach, there's some individual understanding, but scaling it up across the right. organization is very challenging. So getting a yeah. few people come, I think it's a good. Franz, what do you have on that? Like you, you, you gonna, you've done a great job of scaling this throughout the organization you're working with. It's, uh, it's, it's a challenge, isn't it? Uh, it's kind of a challenge, but um, um, I would say that if you're uh, reach a kind of a critical mass in in knowledge, mm-hmm. then the wheel starts rolling and and turning themselves, and uh, it it uh, people get experience, and from that experience they f- gain new creativity for more experience. And uh, I've seen quite a few people in which this became kind of a second nature. Yeah. But that critical mass is what you need. And mm-hmm. again, the problem is if you have to to eat your way through all this uh, almost impossible literature, right, of all these professors from universities that write books mm-hmm. uh, without any aim of you <laughs> and again, uh, all the other ones. Right? <laughs> that no. it yeah. years and years to, uh, to, to really uh, reach that critical mass. So I, I, I wrote, uh, wrote a couple of books, but then I get people in courses, and mm-hmm. uh, these courses uh, are... I say from the content very much structured like the summit and what i always hear afterwards is that this accelerates their knowledge for like a year happening in in three days yeah so i think that's a very important uh, important feature of uh, of, of the whole uh, summit that uh, yeah. you, you gain very quickly uh, that kind of amount of knowledge that you need to almost automatically understand better what's going on yeah for me it's uh 
you really need an understanding of the rationale and the logic of it, right? I'm not just copying, right? Anybody can hand a player a water bag, but you'll really get that from the talks. And then like Bart will show you when a batter has this, I do this. Right, that is where the real magic sauce is, right? Um, uh, understanding yeah. his thought process. Yeah, I agree. yeah. But that's something I, I always advise coaches. You know, mm-hmm. who want to get better at stuff is uh, there's two ways of, of trying it. Mm-hmm. One is getting deeper into detail, mm-hmm. right? Uh, that won't work. Yeah. You have to be able to think lateral, yeah. sideways. Uh, what does this mean for that kind of uh, that 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 uh, field of science, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, what, how do we connect uh, those silos with each other? Mm-hmm. Um, okay, now we have this uh, fantastic concept of constraint that approach, but what's that then in reality in a way that it's it's fairly obvious and simple? Uh, yeah. So mm-hmm. that lateral thinking is, uh, I think, one of the strongest uh, things we For have. Sure. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Well, thanks, guys. I'm looking forward to it. Um, right. Hopefully we see lots of people you there. Too. Yeah, in yes. a few weeks. We, All right. A little over a well, month. I appreciate now. it. So, can't wait to see everybody. You. Okay. Let me stop the recording. Okay, that's it for today's episode. Remember, you can contact me at robgray at asu.edu or follow me on Twitter at shakeyweights. To find out more about the podcast, please check out perceptionaction.com. Finally, to support the podcast and receive bonus materials, including a monthly coaches meetup, please head over to patreon.com forward slash perception action. This is Rob Gray from ASU. Cheers for now and keep them coupled.